So let's talk about the pump curve diagram and especially what or where can we find the NPSH requirement. And just to let you know that this is the minimum amount of, let's say, pressure head before the suction. So this is the minimum that you need in order to compare it with the available. And you have more than the required, you can operate it without cavitation. And this is very important because this will tell us when is our pump system in danger. In many pumps uh, diagram you will find a lot of these ones. You can check very fast and easy what is the NPSHR. This is a, a data given from the supplier. Actually you don't know it until you test it. So for example if you have a pump, it is not there's no way to find out without experimentation. But the good thing is that probably your pump curve is going to have it, so no worries. Make sure to use the scale of the NPSHR because many times they include the scale to the right and even though we have to the left the let's say the head in meters, the NPSHR is also in meters. So just be sure to go to the right, it's almost always to the right and never go to the left only if it states so so one little note NSPH requirement or require is function of Q so that's good the more we increase Q the more NPSHR we need so that's the typical place that we are going to find a NPSHR curve for example this diagram you can see this is the NPSH line and the scale is right here, so don't use this to the left, use this to the right. And once again, you have the NPSH required, and you have the scale to the right. So as you can see, it is on the function of volume, so if I increase volume, I increase. If I increase volume, I increase. If I decrease volume rate, I decrease that. So, let's do a little bit on the exercise, for example, let's see what's the NPSHR, I will operate with 240 gallons per minute. I intersect this and then go directly to the right and I find to be 5, or something around 5. What will be for 480, uh, intersect with this line and go to the right and I found out that my NPSHR must be 15. And you can do the same for 20 and so on. and and we're going to do an, a pretty cool exercise in which we go backwards. We choose first the NPSHR and find out what is the volumetric flow rate. So exercise number one. Calculate NPSHR when we have seven of diameter, so this is the operation line we need. The head is 200, so it's very high. And the gallon per minute is 160 right here so actually it's kinda uh, not it doesn't make sense but we're going to suppose that the data was taken from I don't know you don't actually need it because for the NPSHR we only need volumetric flow rate so let's do it let's get directly to the 160 gallons per minute and cross it with the NPSHR line then go to the right and I found it to be a little bit more than 5 so let's say maybe 5.5 feet and that will be my answer this one is the one I told you about the interesting one so they ask you what is the minimum flow rate so minimum Q given that my NPSH available is about 3.3 meters so I have my pump and I calculated the pressure right here in this section and I know the vapor pressure of my fluid and I calculated my NPSH to be 3.3 so recall that typically and I'm supposing these guys use these criteria so typically this is 10% more so let me take away that 10% and I get this number NPSHR to be number 3 so probably the guys were basing their calculations on this number 3 and what if we choose it to be, I don't know, maybe 5 meters divided by 1.1 and you get 
4.54. So let's actually answer for these five. Uh, for the NPSH available of five, I'm going to suppose that the basis was 4.5, which is right here. Let me go and collider go directly to this and I see that the volumetric flow rate is something around 600 so that will be my answer 600 gallon per minute is the minimum amount in order to have a NPSHA of 5 meters okay so this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you were for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.